Welcome to the Red Conrad Show, the story of my life and world events how I see them. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get this going. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening! Now, really quick before I get started, I just want to point out, if you're not listening to this on Spotify, there is subscriber-only content that you can only subscribe to at the moment via Spotify. So, please hop over to Spotify and subscribe for the subscriber-only content. If you want to support the show, other than subscribing to subscriber-only content, or in addition to, you can go to show.redconrad.com. Underneath all the different platform links, and below the description of the show, you will see different ways you can uh, donate to the show, <clears throat> which will help out greatly and be greatly appreciated. Um, the link to subscribe to the subscriber-only content on Spotify is also linked at show.redconrad.com. Um, <coughs> regular, regularly scheduled episodes will be released every Friday to both the free and subscriber only sides. Any episodes that pop up earlier than Friday to free and or subscriber only I guess you can consider as your extra or bonus episodes um, which will happen as I have something I want to talk about and don't really want to schedule it you know that far in advance. Um, subscriber only is basically going to be <clears throat> all the content, you know, parts of stories or entire stories based on um, what I'm talking about. Certain things, especially if it's a topic that I get, you know, riled up with, so I end up cursing more than I normally do, all that will be subscriber only. So, subscriber only, you're you're, you're gonna hear, you know, a lot, you could hear potentially a lot of cursing, more so than usual. Uh, you could hear, you know, in-depth stories of my suicide attempts, or, um, other alcohol or drug-related stories that simply because of the potential, you know, triggers in, in those stories, I'm not going to ha- have free. Those, those stories are going to be subscriber only or parts of stories that are multi-part that might start or might finish on the free side will be on the subscriber only side. So to really get the full feel of the show, to be able to hear every part of every story that gets published to the show, be sure to subscribe to subscriber-only content via Spotify. <clears throat> Alright, now to get into the topic of the episode. I have, it's May 9th, 2023 right now. I'm saying that for reasons I might publish this as soon as I get done recording it. I have episodes scheduled for release, both free and subscriber-only, for the next couple of weeks. They're already, you know, recorded, uploaded, and sitting in the queue to auto publish on the respective Fridays for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> um, a lot of stories. Um, what I'm doing is basically giving you a rundown of what happened, and then I'm going into you know how I reacted to it, how I dealt with it. <clears throat> so I just want to put out there, you know, how I am. I mean, you could listen to the uh, 
audio converted blog posts <coughs> earlier on in the show. Um, there, there did be the I am that I am series. Um, I am that I am the outcast. I am that I am the physical side. I am that I am uh, a thriver. Um, you know, the whole plan that I am series. That series more or less goes into how I am. Kind of, sort of, somewhat. And when, I, when I initially wrote the blog series, I, I was like... I was at the beginning of trying to be comfortable, you know, opening up about what's wrong with me. And how I view things, how I see things, um, how I react to things. And then, you know, life got in the way and that particular blog series can just ended. Um, it was posted on my wellness blog because, you know, I figured it fits. Mental health is part of health, right? And products that, I, that I'm taking and um, also reselling um, most people could take for physical physical conditions um i use them for my mental health so to me it fit and i was going to branch it off into a blog of its own and you know like i said life got in the way different things got in the way and it just never happened well now via the red conrad show the red conrad show now has its own website um i may move that blog series over to a blog page on the Red Comrade Show's website, and I may continue the series along with recording uh, the podcast. I don't know yet. But one thing I, re- I need people to understand is um, as I said in an episode, I don't remember if it was said when it was already published or if it's coming up, I said it in. An episode that hasn't been released yet, but basically, via the BPD, anyways, from what the strength told me when I was diagnosed, is when I was growing up, the only the response I learned to everything was anger. So that's most of my life how I responded to things was was, was anger. Um, but at the same time. You know, I've always attached to people very easily. You know, I, I am the quiet shy guy in the back of the room, not talking to nobody, but I like being there. I like being around the people. You know, when you first meet me, I will be shy. I'm not going to talk that much. Um, but as you get to know me, and the more comfortable I feel around you, I will start opening up more and more and more and I it will get to the point where I'm just not going to shut up. Uh, I'll just I'll talk your ear off. I mean, if you got something you got to say you want to talk about I'll listen. Don't get me wrong. But you give me an opportunity to talk I, I'll, I'll just keep on going. You know, the more you get to know me, that's what happens. I'm not a social butterfly. Like, I'm not one of these people that can walk into a room full of strangers and just start randomly talking to people. That's not how I operate. I've gotten better at it over the years, mainly because of my businesses, because um, I've had to deal with customers and stuff on my own. Uh, even with my fish market, where I did have a crew working for me, I was really the only one that was handling the customers. They were really just helping out with the fishing part. Uh, my current business, which started out as a taxi service, and then... I expanded on, went into delivery services, and then I started adding on all these extra services with the business more or less morphing into a full-blown personal concierge service. I've gotten better at, you know, talking to complete strangers. I've had customers, when I first, first started, I did a lot of work out in Jacksonville before uh, pre-COVID. I commute out there and work out there. Uh, once COVID hit, I stayed more local, and I got to that the money is definitely better out in Jacksonville. But I've had customers out there that 
person will tell you, I mean, if they were the talkative type, they'll tell you that, that I, I was talkative, I was a nice guy, we, we had, uh, you know, pleasant conversations. Some of my customers were a little bit more rowdy, and I'm going to say were more fun than other customers. Um, there were several occasions where there was well, essentially a party in the van. Like, every, everybody's talking, uh, laughing, having a good time, me taking them where they have to go to. So I have gotten better at, you know, talking to people I don't know that I've just met for the first time. But I am more or less the quiet shy guy when I first meet you. The more we get to know each other, the more, you know, I'll, I'll start talking. And I don't know, maybe through doing this podcast, it'll help me out with that because I'm essentially talking to a whole bunch of strangers right now. I'm telling them... To, you know, very personal stories about my life and very personal things about about, about me. So I don't know, maybe doing this podcast can help me out with that, especially if it actually, you know, grows a decent sized listenership and people keep on coming back to hear more. Maybe that'll help me with it. I, I don't know. But most of my life, I was the quiet guy. Didn't really talk much until I got to know you. The more we got to know each other, you know, the easier it would be. The easier it would be for me to, to talk to you and then, you know, feel comfortable enough to not shut up. Um, but at the same time, you know, because I do have friends that don't understand. Like, I've even tried explaining to them, you know, how I am as a person. Some some people giving out my, my mental illnesses, some people I mention my mental illnesses to. Because um, it is, parts of it is a trait of the various illnesses. But, I attach easily to people. You know, if I let you into my inner circle, you know, figure that, you know, I'm, I'm good to you. You have my trust, you have my loyalty, you have my respect. If I let you in my inner circle. So anything you do that I perceive as wrong or bad, I'm going to take personal. And if we get into an argument, I don't care what it's about. You go over the stupidest shit. I am going to take that personal. I am going to feel hurt. I am going to get depressed. It's just how I am. When and and I I emotion hard, and from what I understand. From reading other, from reading blog posts from other people, other sufferers of my conditions, particularly the BPD, is you know we emotion hard. Like when we're angry, we're angry. When we love, we love. When we're upset, we're upset. When we're happy, we're ecstatic. Does that make sense? Like, am I saying that the right way? Like, there is no shallow ground with my emotions um if I'm in a good mood I'm in a super mood right if I'm in a bad mood uh, I I'm in I I'm in a really really bad mood and depending on who you are it could take a lot to get me back into a good mood again there's only ever been very very few people come back and almost instantly get me out of a bad mood into a good mood very few most people, they can, they they tried and they they can't do it. If I'm in a, if I'm in a bad mood, I'm in a deeply bad mood. You got kind of got to just let me cool off and calm down on my on my own time. When I get angry, I'm basically super enraged. Okay, and and part of the reason behind that is like when something upsets me, <clears throat> I might I I. Depending on what it is, I might not react right away. Like, I'll let it sit and boil inside of me. And then, you know, eventually, something stupid will happen, or seemingly stupid will happen, That and I'll just completely go off, which does make me look like I'm insane to some people that don't know me and don't understand me. Because now all they're going to be looking at is the seemingly small 
situation that really shouldn't have gotten anybody as upset as it had just made me. And they're going to be trying to figure out what the, why the fuck did I get that upset from something so small. The problem is, I'm not upset over just that situation. It's just that I've had so much building up inside of me for so long that that seemingly small situation was dicing on the cake that, that just made everything boil over. And now, in response to all those different situations, now the anger is going to come out all at once. And there's other situations that I can go from nice and calm to extremely hot just like that. Like you flip the light switch, depending on what the situation is. Um, it's, 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 you know, just the way I am. There's certain wording and phrases that were used, you know, in a derogatory way in my direction when I was younger. That if I hear somebody say it to me, even if they mean it, you know, completely innocently, they can mean it, you know, as a compliment even, which did happen recently on Twitter. What's going to end up happening is I'm going to replay that part of my past through my head. And I'm going to respond to that event, not to you saying whatever it was you, you said to me. Uh, on whatever it is we're talking about, I'm going to respond to the situation in the past. And it could take me a little bit of time to realize I just completely, you know, misinterpreted what the fuck just happened. And then, I'm, and when I do, I'm going to go back to you and I'm going to try to apologize for, for, for it. And I'm going to try to ask you, you know, what exactly meant by it. Like happened on Twitter. Me and this other and this other guy who were having a conversation about something. He said something that I took the wrong way, and I almost sent a tweet back at him. You know, full of anger and shit. Decided not to, and instead tweeted out an open-ended tweet, giving him room to clarify what he meant by what he said, and. Um, he responded back to me saying that he meant it as a compliment. You know, didn't mean, any, didn't mean anything bad by it. And then, after he said that, I then went on and explained to him why I responded initially the way I did, looking for the clarification, because, you know, sometimes based on, you know, the wording or the, or the phrase, I can and have in the past, you know, misinterpreted things people were saying and took it the wrong way. So before I take it the wrong way, I just wanted to, to, wanted to be sure you know, how it was meant. But that, that's just how my mind works. And from my understanding of my illnesses, you know, and my understanding of blog posts from other people, other sufferers of my illnesses, that's how people like me in general, you know, view things. I mean, other people with my illnesses might not you know, view the same wording or the same phrases the same way that I do. They might not misinterpret the same things in the same way that I do. <clears throat> but the phrases and that I misinterpret and the things that I misinterpret sometimes the wrong way from people is based on situations that happened in my past. So I'm going to assume the same would be true for other sufferers of my illnesses. Like, whatever it is that they might misinterpret or see the wrong way from people would be relevant to whatever happened to them in, in their past. Um. <clears throat> but I go, I'm generally to that extreme on everything. Like, if I tell you that I care about you, whether it be in a relationship, whether it be a friendship, whether it be a family member, <clears throat> when I say I care about you, I mean I care about you to the extreme. 
Like, <clears throat> nothing. There's nothing I won't do to, to help you out. Nothing I won't do to, to be there for you. There is no, you know, questioning how I feel. So, if you, relationship, friendship, family, do something to me that is hurtful or that I view as wrong, I'm going to get depressed. I'm going to get upset. And depending on how close we are and the type of relationship that it is, it could end up putting me into a very dark spot. Okay? And, and, you know, just like, you know, I can, I, I care about you to the extreme. Can you do me wrong? I can, uh, I'm the opposite to the, to the, to the same extreme. Like there, there is no shallowness in my, in, in my emotions. I emotion to the extreme. <clears throat> and that's one thing that everybody that that knows me needs to understand. Most people that that's known me for a little while <coughs> do understand it or say they understand it. But there's a few people that I met recently that are trying to be my friend, trying to you know work their way into my inner circle. That need to understand that I love hard, I happy hard, I angry hard, I emotion hard and I can go from one extreme to the other extreme just like that flip a light switch you know it's that it's that quick that easy I can literally go from the most loyal person you've ever known to your worst fucking enemy just like that and there are some people that have experienced that from me Based on different, based on shit that they, that they did to me. You know, there's only so much. I mean, most people, especially if you're in my inner circle, I will give, you know, a gazillion second chances to. I will give the benefit of the doubt to a gazillion times. You know, because how I care, how much I care about you, and, you know, how much I, I you know, respect and want. Our friendship is going to override whatever it is you've done to me. But at the same time, I'm only going to deal with it for so long. And there's certain situations, certain things that you can do that that'll be the end of the benefit of the doubt. That'll be the end of your second chances. I no longer consider you in my inner circle. I don't care if you're a friend, I don't care if you're family, you do, there's certain things you can do that that's it, we're done. I don't fucking care, we're done. And once I feel that way about you, there's literally almost nothing that you can do or say that'll fix it. Even if I get back to the point where I'm talking to you again, and I'm um, like, seemingly okay with you again you're never going to be back in my inner circle and I'm never going to look at you the same again it's just not going to happen but fortunately only very very few people in my life ever did something that serious um But there are, you know, there's, I'm trying to find the right way to uh, put this into words. Like, I'm, I'm trying really hard to explain myself right now. I don't want to sound redundant and repeat myself a million times. But I just need people, I want people to understand how I am. Particularly certain people that I just met in the recent past that are trying to make their way into my inner circle. One of them, you know, I only met a few times. 
I helped them through a you know bad situation that they were in, and then I haven't heard from them since. So you know, I tried reaching out to them, and still nothing. So as far as I'm concerned, they ever pop up again, fuck them. They lost their chance of being my friend. You know, I was there for them, like literally the day I met them. I met them through another friend, and the day I met them was the day I started helping them out through the situation. Like, I was literally their last chance of having some place safe that they can go for a little while. So, our mutual friend, you know, introduced them to me, brought them here, I helped them out, they cost me a little bit of money. At first, I didn't really give a shit because they seemed like a decent person. I thought we had a friendship growing. So, you know, whatever is is what it is. And then as soon as that situation was over and done with, that was it. I haven't heard from them since. I tried reaching out to them again. As far as I'm concerned, they burned that bridge. Like, you know, fuck, just fuck them. I, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to have people in my life that are only going to view me as something that they can use and abuse. And apparently people like me, we seem to be walking around with a neon sign on our foreheads that, that says that we're easy targets because I mean, there is no shortage of people like this. But I trusted this person because they were a friend of somebody that I was friends with. And obviously, you know, I made a wrong call there. And then that particular friend, um, I'm also having some issues with. I mean, things were said that I believed, or that I, I still, to a degree, want to believe about them, about, you know, how they are. But, you know, they're, they're proving the opposite of what I want to believe them to be as a person. They're proving to be the opposite of what they say they are as a person. And there, there is rumors around town. I mean, we live in a small rural community and there are rumors that have been flying around about them that I did hear when I first moved down here before I even met the person. I heard these rumors and I didn't want to believe them but they are proving these rumors to be true. I mean, you don't tell somebody the things that this person told me and then turn around and fucking ghost them for fucking two months. You don't beg me for a job like they did for two fucking years. Get the job not once but twice and then both times completely fuck up the job. And by fuck up, I mean they didn't show up. And then when contact is made, the excuse is, well, I don't know what to say. How about the fucking truth? From a business standpoint and from a personal standpoint, what the fuck's going on? What happened? Why didn't you show up to fucking work? From a personal standpoint, well, again, what the fuck happened? What's going on? How how do you truly feel? You know, I finally was told, you know, what happened, um, the situation, and I can, I can understand the situation to a degree, but like, you don't come to me and tell me certain things that more or less suggest that you can trust me enough to, um, know about your situation, your issues, and you see that I, you know, you see my ability to be able to help you work through those issues, and then you just turn around and fucking ghost me. It's like, well, do you actually care about me at all? Do you want me in your life at all? Do you want any kind of support to get through the issue that you're in at all? I mean, what the fuck? And then, uh, there's another one that I have yet to meet in person, but they're going through some shit with people that, 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 that they know, 
And uh, one night, you know, they wanted to hang out. Okay, fine. But then they're, you know, yelling at me about the situation they're in, throwing assumptions and accusations around. Um, a little bit of name calling, quite a bit of gaslighting. And at that point, you know, I had enough is enough. So yeah, my voice started to raise a little bit. And then I get yelled at because I'm yelling at them. Well, you're yelling at me first, bitch. And, and I'm sorry, I'll listen to what you're dealing with. I'll try, you know, helping you get through whatever it is you're dealing with. I've done that for all my friends since I was a kid. You know, I was always the friend that people came to to, to, to talk to. I was, I was always my friend's shoulder to cry on. I don't have an issue with that. What I do have an issue with, however, is you fucking making assumptions and bullshit accusations based on things that I'm saying online that have nothing to do with you, and then trying to gaslight me into the situation that you're going through as if I'm the one that fucking did that shit. That's what I got an issue with. So yeah, I'm going to get a little upset about that. And yeah, I am going to raise my voice a little bit. What the fuck do you expect? And that argument was attempted to be ended several times that night by both of us. I was willing to let it go. But then they kept on with the text messages, kept on with the phone calls. There was a couple times where they'd ring my phone nonstop until I answered it. Just hang up on me again. Okay, whatever. No, it is what it is. And yeah, I was initially freaking angry and upset about that situation. And then I had a little bit of time where, yeah, I was hurt by it. I mean, to me and this person, even though we haven't met in person yet, we were talking online over the phone for quite a bit. And, you know, I, I thought that they were going to end up, you know, in some in, in my inner circle. Uh, but now I'm at the point where, like, you know what? Fuck you. Like, you're going to try to gaslight me into your situations? Make me your fucking punching bag? No, I'm not about that shit. No, just, just, just no. You want to talk about what you're going through, get support to get through it. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'm going to be your punching bag. You're going to accuse me of doing all that shit to you. Can you know damn well it was the other person? Nah. Not fucking doing that shit. Fuck you. And the, and the, you see, the, the thing is, like, I don't know. I already messed up an initial recording of this episode, so I don't know if I said it in this one or if it was only said in the fucked up one. But like, I'm not a social butterfly, exactly. I'm I'm the quiet shy guy in the back of the room. You first meet me, you know, I'm gonna be shy. The more we get to know each other, the more I'll open up. The more talkative I'll be. Just how I am. And like I believe I said earlier in this episode, I emotion hard, right? And I attach very easily to people. So when some when shit goes sour, yeah, it's gonna be I'm gonna feel hurt. Depending on our closeness, it could end up triggering my depression. And if we're that close, it could end up you know, putting me in a dark spot for a little while. But once I get to the point where, no, we're done, that's it. I'm sorry, motherfucker, we're done. We are done. Once I get to that point, you've used up all your second chances with me. And these few individuals... Are getting really close. One of them, like I said, already used up their. Uh, I'm done with that person already. The other two individuals are getting dangerously close to me getting to that point. And I really don't want to. 
I mean, like I said, because of how my life went and how I've, what I've come to learn about myself and, and, you know, different things, my circle is a lot smaller now than it was when I was younger on purpose because I want quality friends. I don't really care for the quantity. I want quality. You know, I want friends that are going to be there for me no matter what. Friends that will return the respect, the loyalty, the trust that I give them. They'll, they'll do the same for me. You know, that's the kind of friend that I want. So my inner circle currently is very small. But I'm not exactly, you know, against allowing more people into my inner circle. You know, there will be a certain size it gets to that once it reaches that certain size, I'm not going to let anybody else in. Like, I'll feel content with the amount of people that I have. So, anybody else. But at the moment, you know, I'm not entirely against the idea of other people working their way into my inner circle. But at the same time, they need to understand, you know, I'm only going to go so far. Now, I treat you, if that, if how I treat you isn't reciprocated, there's only going to be so many second chances before I'm done. And once I'm done, that's it, I'm done. And what people need to understand, like I said a couple times already, is I emotion hard. I don't care if you're a family, a friend, whatever. I emotion hard. If I tell you I care about you, I care about you to the extreme. If you hurt me, I'm going to feel hurt to the extreme. Way more so than the average person would be. That's just how my mind works. It's just how I am. There are things that are going to be done or said that is going to get misinterpreted. And I am going to initially be angry or upset by it. You just either A, gotta, you know, when it happens, explain, you know, how it was meant, right? Or B, just let it be. Stop talking about it. Let me fucking calm down and realize I... I you know, misinterpreted it, and I'm, 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 you know, reacting the wrong way to it, and when I do, I will go back up to you, I will bring it back up, and we will talk about it again, and I will try to uh, make sure I understand correctly what you meant by what you said. It's going to happen. It just is. No matter how old I get, no matter how much counseling I go through, no matter how much I learn about myself and understand about myself, that's not going to change. And it does aggravate me. Like, I know what the phrases are that I'm going to misinterpret hearing from people. Okay? I know different things that are going to that are going to trigger my anger. I, 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 I know this. And despite knowing that, I really can't help it. Like, in the heat of the moment, it's going to happen. I can't stop it. I just can't. The only thing I can do is, as soon as I can, while I'm going through that particular situation, is realize, um, you know, I'm getting angry over nothing, or I'm misinterpreting something to be something that it isn't, and try to understand what it is. I have to be able to try to get myself to understand that as quickly as possible in the situation, when the situations arise, which does aggravate me. I don't know, had I listened to my strength back when I was 25 and let him put me on stability and go through counseling for 10 years, if that would have helped me where... One, I could have realized all the stuff about myself a lot sooner than I did, but also maybe got to the point where now realizing it, like I'd be able to to stop the overreaction or stop the misinterpretation before it even started. Like I, I don't know if that would have been a possibility. Um, 
But the fact of the matter is, I didn't want to hear I had to go on disability. I didn't want to hear I couldn't work. And I sure as shit didn't want to hear I needed, quote unquote, a minimum of 10 years of counseling before maybe I'd be able to uh, work. No, at, at 25 years old, I did not want to hear that shit. And actually, that's partially why I've gone from business to business to business to business. Because, you know, if I'm working for myself, number one, I'm not going to fire myself for stupid shit that I do. Um, and two, the only people I got to deal with outside my customers is people I choose to deal with. Like, I don't have co-workers unless I hire somebody. And... I don't have to hire somebody that, you know, I feel is going to be a good fit for the freaking job. And quite frankly, you know, being able to get along with me would be a requirement, at least for the beginning of the job, so that I, I, I can train it. Because it's not, what I do for a living is it's a mobile-based business, service-based business. There is no office or storefront. So a new hire would really only be around me purposes of training and then they're kind of on their own but I'd have to be able to, to, to you know get along with somebody at least long enough to, to train them and feel that they feel comfortable enough that they'd be able to, to do the job correctly and handle my customers you know respectfully professionally with as you know minimal issues as possible and as I've said in another episode, um, most of the jobs I've had really didn't last long. I've always worked two, three jobs before I started full-time business for myself. But most of my jobs were only like two years, two and a half years. The longest one was two and a half years before I either got fired or quit. For one reason or the other. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's just the way I am. I, I like my work, no matter what it is I do. I put my all into it. I've never really had a problem with any of my jobs as far as the work was involved. I, most jobs I've had, I did enjoy the, the job itself. It was just, you know, different situations at work or co-workers I had to work with that for one reason or another I just didn't like. And, you know, when I was younger, I was an asshole. I didn't have as much control over myself as I do now. And because of that, you know, stupid shit happened. And I couldn't really hold the job longer than two and a half years because of how I was when I was younger. If I got a, a job now that I liked, I can probably hold it longer than that because I have you know more control over myself and how I react to different situations. But I kind of enjoy working for myself. It's hard sometimes, it's stressful sometimes, but like I said, I'm not going to fire myself for stupid shit. And I like what I do. I like my customers. My customers like me. So, no, you know, that's not to say that I won't work a, a job on the side of my business, because I did. I have in the past. I will, you know, when I have to, if I have to. I have nothing against that. But, generally speaking, if it was going to be just a job or just my business, my own business, I'm going to choose my own business every single time. As far as a W-2 job goes, W-2 job will always be an extra in addition to my own business. It's not ever going to replace my business. I've had businesses that for one reason or the other ended, whether I just couldn't compete or, you know, regulatory changes, as was the case in the fish market that I couldn't afford. I'm just going to end up at that point getting a, getting a job 
and, and then you know starting up another business like my current business I had a job both before and during this business but this current business I've now had for over four years so you know um yeah I, I, I think maybe I hope I got the point across of what I was trying to say about myself in this episode. I'm just trying to get some understanding out there before the stories start rolling out so people can have a good a good you know understanding of you know from my past stories to my present stories, particularly when when there's a change in similar situations to how I react to the situations there's some kind of understanding of how my mind works and you know how I was back then versus how I am now like yes I was an asshole back in the day I had a lot less control over myself over the monster inside me in the past so my reactions to different events in the past were a little fucked up and and definitely an overreaction most of the time but I have since gotten the monster in me under control. I've realized a lot more of, about myself and about my illnesses over the years. And I've been able to use that to, you know, have closer to normal, I guess I can say, reactions to, to different events and, and, you know, how I handle the different situations. You know, as I got older. So, I guess I'm going to end this episode here. If you listen to the whole thing, I appreciate you. I hope to see you in the next episode. And please uh, consider going to show.redconrad.com and subscribing to subscriber-only content and or leaving a donation to the show so I can, you know, hopefully continue finding time to to record more episodes and reach more people and hopefully end up creating a community through my podcast of other sufferers with my conditions that I can bring on as a guest and you know talk about their lives and uh, compare coping skills and you know basically really turn my show into like a support community for for people like me people that suffer with similar conditions to mine and you know let people know that you know one they're not alone and uh two there are there are you know a number of ways that you can learn to cope with the illnesses and you know handle different situations without looking completely fucking insane um so again i thank you for for listening i hope to see you in the next episode have a wonderful day hi everyone this is jj the co-founder of good pods if you haven't heard of it yet good pods is like goodreads or instagram but for podcasts it's new it's social it's different and it's growing really fast There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening! Thank you for listening to this episode of The Red Conrad Show. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, if you're not listening on Spotify, Spotify is the home of my subscription-only content. So any stories you want to hear that have part one or you know, they're missing pieces on the, on the free side, you got to hop over to Spotify and subscribe to the, subscri- to the subscription content to get the uh, missing pieces of those particular stories. I will see you in the next episode.